This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. I met Margaret on our first creative retreat, which we ran last year in June in Tuscany. And I noticed two things straight away. One was that she was the person in the group who chose not to come with us to the local towns when we took a day trip out. And she decided instead to stay back at the retreat center so she could spend proper alone time and do processing. And that really impressed me because she obviously knew what retreats were really about. And the second thing was that if we ever lost Margaret, we were pretty sure we'd know where we'd find her. And that was in the swimming pool because she has a love of being in the water. So much so that she put her notebook next to the swimming pool and she'd do laps and then stop to jot down some thoughts and some notes and then keep on doing laps. And she'd do this for hours. The more I spoke to her, the more I realized here is a secure introvert, a creative who knows exactly what they need to stay mentally healthy so that they can keep on creating. And this year, when she came back for our second creative retreat, I found out that she's moved herself to the remote island of Harris so she can carve out that space for herself to keep creating and to dig in specifically on making images in the water with her camera that convey that sense of peace and tranquility that being in the water brings. So I thought Margaret would be a great person to talk to, not only about how she makes the images that she does and how she fills them with the mood that she intends to get across to those who view those images, but also about how she structures her life as an introverted, creative person. And so I took the long drive up to Ullapool in Scotland and then took the ferry across to the Isle of Harris to sit down with her and ask her these questions. As usual with these little documentary films, I'm gonna leave Margaret's images to the end. And I'm saying that up front because I know that frustrates some of you, you tell me so in the comments, but there is a purpose behind it because I think a photographer's images hit so much harder if you hear their story first and understand where they're really coming from. So I hope you have the patience to wait until the end to see her work. But I'm gonna shut up now and let you hear from my friend, Margaret Soraya. When I was young, I was always drawing and painting. Uh, so I was sort of central in Manchester and I just wanted to paint the countryside. So I decided that I was going to learn to drive and then I was going to buy a camera. So I bought a camera basically so I could go out and photograph the landscape and then come back and paint from it. So that was really where photography started for me. It was, it was kind of a means to um, painting and I went to to college to do fine art painting. But I didn't get on very well with the degree, so I switched over to photography and I ended up in Swansea studying photography. I, I didn't stay very long at Swansea. I stayed for a year, so I basically dropped out of university twice. I found it very difficult. I found the critique sessions really difficult. I found I was quiet and not very articulate and I wasn't able to understand very well what I was doing. But what I was doing was photographing very intuitively. And I was taking my uh, camera out on the surfboard with me <laughs> and it wasn't very uh, well received by my tutors who kind of just saw me coming into lectures with wet hair and a surfboard on my roof. <laughs> so uh, it didn't go down too well and I left after a year and at that point I put my cameras down for quite a number of years. When I had my second child I uh, decided that I was going to start a business <laughs> in photography. So it was a f but around about a 10 year gap of putting the cameras down after university to Cameron being born and um, me deciding that I was just going to start the business up. So he was six months old and I started up uh, Margaret McAteer Photography, which was my name back then. And I began doing um, babies, passport photos, literally anything, wedding photography and commercial work. It kind of literally, 
uh, saved us all because it meant that when my um, marriage broke up and we were left with it, with nowhere to go and nowhere to live, that I was able to just to continue to support the boys. As the years went on and I get more, got more freedom with the children, I was able to be out in the landscape a bit more because that's naturally where I, I'm, you know, passionate. So growing up, I was fairly quiet and shy and um, I always felt a little bit like a lesser person because of it or was maybe made to feel a, a little bit um, not quite as good as the people that spoke up and were gregarious, shall we say. And when I was 35, I came out of my marriage and I had this period of um, looking around at myself and really looking in depth at, at who I was. And uh, I read a book by Susan Cain called Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking. And I just suddenly understood myself. I suddenly realised that actually I... I I was I was strong as an introvert. It was actual. It was a positive trait, and from then on, my self acceptance and my self awareness just just climbed, and my confidence climbed with it. So, I started to realise that being alone, I was at my most creative. So I was wasn't long before I bought a, a van and I started travelling over to Harris um, because it's very quiet over here, and I used to be able to find pockets of places where I could park with no signal so I could have a couple of days in the van completely cut off from everything and bearing in mind my family life was quite dem dem demanding and quite intense at the time it was a really good opportunity to be able to come away to create and I started to notice that when I had times away completely by myself that's when I had my best creative thoughts ideas that's when I started writing and so I learned from that and I started to realise actually, OK, I can travel alone. So that's great. And then I became more creative because of all of this solo time meant that I was able to um, just have more time to work on whatever it is I wanted to and have time and space for these thoughts to come out. Over the years, I've realised that as an introvert, I need to understand that. I think understanding that, first of all, understanding that there's nothing wrong with you and that it's actually a, a positive thing. And that also, it doesn't mean that you're shy. It means that you can stand up in front of an audience of 200 people if you've got purpose behind that. But you also need to allow time for recovery. So giving the space to myself has been the most important thing. So if I've got an event coming up, I'll always create, carve out that space. So if I run a retreat, I'll have two days alone afterwards. And that's my way of re-energising. And I think that once you learn to work with that, it's it can be absolutely wonderful because then you can do the work that you really want to do. You can be in this wonderful community of people. And it doesn't mean that I don't want to be around people. I, I love interesting conversations that are deeper and they tend to be with introverts. Um, I'm not interested in going to the pub and having a chat. And so I will just say no. It's just not, it's not me. I will stand up for, I, I tend to just stand up for what, what I know is good for me now. And, and even if that goes against society's norms a little bit, so be it. And I think it's, it's great to have got to this place. But, but definitely as an introvert, you need to allow time. So when I decided to move over to Harris, it was actually a long process. I kind of knew, always knew that I'd be happy living out here because it is a very quiet place but it's also surrounded by the coast that I love so I feel I've I've just been waiting basically for my children to leave home <laughs> and when they did in September I decided well, now's the time so I, I bought a house it's a very remote area and I just love the fact that it's surrounded by sheep and <laughs> not many people and I just thrive here actually and that's a lot to do with understanding myself and understanding that I'm able to live in a place like this. I have the personality to be able to thrive here because of my creativity it gives me the space and this time and I just love my life here so much now and I do think that I am going to be more creative as a, as a result of it. This summer, when I, I moved into the house and I did a lot of the work on the inside, first of all, so I could give myself some space to create. So it feels like the first summer I've ever had in my life, to be honest with you, because I feel like I've just been working or bringing up the children and shooting weddings every summer. And it's just been incredible to watch the the season come through and like the wildflowers come up and the heather arrive and it's just been 
the most incredible summer. It's not going to last forever. <laughs> but I, I think it's what's really important is to work with like seasons in your in your life and, and the energy that you have. And I say that because I suffer from a lot of fatigue and that kind of goes hand in hand with the, the migraines and this, this kind of goes back to this stressful period in my life. So we've got this situation where I now have to just manage my energy rather than feeling like you have to be productive all day to be a good person. Um, I think I'm learning to say, well, actually that day was well spent because it, it, I enjoyed it. I was out in the water. I was creative. I was I had good company, whatever it is, but I, I'm definitely learning to be more uh, gentle on myself. Swimming's always been a massive part of my life. So when I was young, I swam in the pool. Um, I swam competitively as a child and I always loved it. It was always a, a release for me and where I felt most happy. As I grew up into a teenager, I carried on swimming and I, I've always swum in, in swimming pools. It's always been a way of kind of like battling through emotions almost. It's like the rhythmic strokes are just really um, mindful to me, I suppose, and I go into this space where my head's either cleared or I can release emotions. I did stop swimming for quite a long period in my life. Again, after I had my children, I think at that period in my life, I stopped doing anything that was um, that made me feel like me, so I stopped being creative, but I also stopped swimming. And that was due to feeling conscious about the extra weight I'd put on, which is absolutely ridiculous looking at it now. But I did, uh, that's how I felt. And so I didn't go into a swimming pool for, for quite a few years. And then one day I decided, this is ridiculous, get back in the pool. And I started, started again. And I'm so, so glad I did. I haven't stopped since, but it has evolved because I've kind of combined the love of the ocean that I've had and this deep connection with the sea with my swimming and I took it, that took the swimming outdoors about 12 years ago. Water for me, I hadn't quite realized how important it was in my life until recently. And it feels like everything's just kind of coming together now at this point in my life when I'm at my most self-aware. I grew up in Manchester, but I was quite unhappy as a child. And every summer we went over to my grandma's house in Holland and she lived by the coast. So we would literally go every single day to the beach and we'd walk down to the beach and there was waves. It was quite a, a rough beach and it wasn't always wonderful weather, but it was a wonderful experience for me. And that was where I was at my happiest and that's where I felt a release and um, this real deep down contentment. I and mean, I think that's lived with me ever since. And I think that's quite a common thing um, to, to, to have something in your childhood where you feel completely at peace and then later in life you want to revisit that and you want to express that. I think that now a lot of my photography and a lot of my painting, in fact all of my photography and all of my painting and all of my writing is about the water and it was something that I'd sort of worked through as a photographer, I, uh, you know in the early days as a landscape photographer I thought well you, you have to climb mountains to be a landscape photographer don't you? And then I was like, well, actually, I just kept going back to the sea and back to the sea. And then over the years, I realized just, just allow that to happen. If you're really drawn to something, then just keep photographing it. I, I think it's where I'm most peaceful. It's where I'm most uh, myself. And I continually want to get closer and closer to expressing that. So being completely immersed in, in the water, it's going one step more to that feeling. So I suppose when I'm standing on the beach and I'm photographing, I feel this calmness and I feel this serenity and I feel this happiness and this joy at the landscape, but at the coast. But when I'm in the water photographing it, it feels like it's a complete immersion, if you like. So I'm one step closer to these feelings that I'm trying to portray. But then when you're in the water as well, you just feel completely surrounded by it. So. I'm trying to put that into photographs um, and I think I'm, you know, I'm getting closer to that because when I look at the images myself, I feel joy and I feel this, this calmness as well. About 10 years ago, I knew that I would go back to painting and I think I probably always knew that, but I was just kind of waiting for the right time in life. And I, I do think that we have these times that we're ready for certain things. So I set up a little uh, space in my house, which is actually my entrance to the house. 
and it's plastered full of inspiration and I started painting really recently, probably uh, just a few weeks ago and I don't really know what I'm doing because it's been so long and sometimes I think I don't know how to, to oil paint, you know, how do you, how do you do that? But actually coming from the experience of learning photography, I know that a lot of it is just down to practice. So I decided, well, just get stuck in there and learn, learn as you go and just practice, practice. So it does seem to be coming quite easily to me. It feels like it's flowing really well and I'm I'm just enjoying it so much. I'm having a, an amazing time. I've always created, ever since I was a small child, so I've always, I was always sitting in the corner drawing. And I need now, I know that I need to create now. I know that if I don't, my well-being suffers. It gets me out into the landscape and, and it opens up this gratitude as well. So you have this, this feeling of when you're out there, I'm just so grateful for everything that's happening in front of me. I'm so, even more so that I'm living here now, when I go out, I'm grateful to be here every single day. And it doesn't matter what the weather is, it will get me out with my camera in different circumstances. So if it's if it's wild and stormy, I'll be out shooting, shooting waves from the beach. If it's sunny and calm, I'll be in the water with my camera. I make it part of my everyday. So every single day I'm creating either by photographing or now by painting, which is relatively new to me. I get very much in a, a flow state with um, painting, I think. I'm very much in that zone and it's very expressive. And writing is slightly more difficult for me at the moment because I'm just learning. But again, that's a wonderful feeling of expressing myself. And I think we all need to express ourselves. It's one of those things that's just a basic human need and we don't give it enough credit. I think we see it as a luxury, but it isn't a luxury, it's a necessity because it's, it's an outlet and as human beings we need to be creative. So I hope that listening to Margaret's story has helped because I'm going to guess and say that there are a lot of other photographers out there who really relate to that more introverted approach to their creativity. And at the very least, I hope it's given you a sense of safety in numbers, to know that you're not alone, that there are a lot of other people who think and work like you do. But at the very best, hopefully some of her advice has given you some good ideas about how you can structure your own creative output. Also, I didn't have time to fit it in the edit, but it has to be said that one of the things that really impresses me about Margaret is how she's creating a space, especially for women photographers. We can all admit, I think, that the landscape photography space in particular can be quite male heavy, but she's really working hard to create a home for female photographers where they feel welcome as well. Her photography conferences and workshops are regularly attended by more women than men, which I think we can all admit is quite a rare thing these days. And I think it's really a testament to how much she champions and celebrates the work of female photographers. So I'd really encourage you to look her up, take some time with her work, see how you can get involved. She also has some books available where you can pick up her work for yourself. I will leave all the relevant links down in the description below. And lastly, thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. If you need a new website or a domain, they're a fantastic option. I've used them myself as my website of choice for over a decade now. The biggest reason I chose to use Squarespace right at the beginning and still do now is because I don't really know how to put a website together. And so I needed something that was really, really simple, but also looked very, very clean. And thankfully, Squarespace have a whole host of templates which are put together by professional designers that do look very clean and minimal, and they're very, very easy to use. In the back end, you're just dragging in text blocks, image galleries, videos, contact sheets, whatever you want and what you see is what you get. It couldn't be simpler to put together. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com forward slash Sean Tucker to get 10% off your first purchase.